Hi, I'm Lindy Witten. Welcome to the studio. Today I'm just going to be uh, demonstrating a uh, path scene with a painting. I had uh, my pastel class on Friday and I was talking to the class about um, keying your painting, how to key your painting to make it either brighter and lighter or darker and more moody and how that uh, will affect what key you go for will affect a whole of your choices and so I had pulled out a little um, photo for them unfortunately I only have it on my phone and for some reason my phone won't transfer it to uh, my computer so I'll just grab that for you so it's just a, a little scene of a path with um, a couple of people walking in it and I was talking to the class about how sometimes you have a reference or you're outside and you're looking at a scene and it's you can't quite decide whether it's to be high or low key because it's got a lot of darks and it's got a lot of brights in it. So I asked the class what they would like me to do and they wanted to do a high key. Um, they wanted to, to concentrate on the light and I was all for the dark dark side. I wanted to do the... Sorry, I had that light shining there. I wanted to concentrate on the dark. So I, I did what the class wanted and this is the result here. You can see that although there are dark shadows back here, it's all about this bright patch here where the sunlight's hitting the trees and going across the path. So now I'm going to do one with the lower key. For this one, the background paper I chose was this sienna coloured paper, which brought out the warmth of the painting. So because I'm going now for a, a lower key, a darker, more moody painting, I'm choosing a much darker paper. This is um, a Mytense Smooth. Actually, I think it's Colorfix. Colorfix Smooth. It, it is a gritted surface, but it's much smoother than the usual one. I did a review video on that at, at, uh, in one of my videos, and I actually quite like it. Um, some of my class feel it doesn't hold enough pastel, but for me, I put on a lot of pastel, it holds it quite well. Um, so as long as you don't go in too thickly at the beginning, you'll be fine with this uh, colour that's smooth. Lovely colour. I think it's called Elephant, which is quite a funny name. So you can see here I've cropped it and I've honed right down to that area there. And what, I'm, what I've got is my box of Sennelia Darks because they're going to be quite important for this painting. And I've also got out my Richard McKinley Terry Ludwig Pastels. This is the box here. I've used this quite a lot and I'm going to be concentrating on the dark section, using the dark section. I wanted to use comparable box to what I used for the light one to just uh, keep it consistent for the class. So I'm going to first sketch in um, the main idea of this. So it's going to have a main idea of um, a path leading in here. So it's going to lead in here. Uh, the people are going to be here, so just some little figures there. And then it's going to have a whole lot of darks coming in around them, like so. Some darks coming across there. Oh, this is going to be a dark area. dark trees up there, trunks, all that's going to be dark, and then some dark coming in across the road like that. And this is going to actually be dark here. So when we're talking um, about changing the key, you need to remember if you're going dark, the brights will be more muted brights than they would have been in the original reference, and the darks will, will be deepening them up. If I'm going to the low key, sorry, the higher key, the brighter feeling. I've emphasised the brights and the lights there by using brighter greens and yellows and golds in there. And I've lifted the shadows. I haven't used such deep dark shadows. So I've keyed it all up a little bit. You can think of it as um, high lights, low lights. And that, that sort of is, is one way to remember it. So I've just blocked in some main shapes there and now I'm going to be working through, I'm going to be picking out all my darks, deeps for these trees here, and up 
putting in some really deep darks to start with. I want to keep the whole thing quite dark and moody. I was toying with using a black, but I decided not to. I might let a peep of sky come in here, I'm not sure yet. I'll just put it in and see what I think about it. I'm either going to leave that sky in, corner of sky in, or I'm going to make the figures much bigger. And I think I might just leave the corner of the sky in there, peeping through those trees. So here we go, just a whole lot of different colours in there. And I'm just moving the pastel round and round, very randomly at this stage, just to try and get a, a feel for getting those darks in. I'm going to, because this is my focal point, which I realise I put in the middle, I shouldn't need to move these. Mm, which way am I going to move them? Probably across this way a little bit, though that's going to mess up my path. But that, that might be what I do, like so because they are the focal point and I don't want them too much in the middle. So I'll just take those out. It's easy to move things around. And I'm just going to move it, uh, put some nice deep darks around those figures there. Just so I can remember that's the focal spot there. And it's really just going to be back and forth now, putting in all those darts. And just moving my pastel in the way that a tree would grow. Making sort of round shapes. Round me there. So it is lighter and more sunlit there, but I'm not going to go into the really bright ones I used over in this rendition. I'm just going to start putting in some lighter greens, but not amazingly light. And I'm leaving some of that purpley, uh, darker purple colour show through. So a few lights, but they're cooler greens than in the other. And not as light. Going back into the the dark side now. I'm coming right up and making a few little inroads into this lighter area with my, my darks. darkest ones right over this side, just sort of coming up into the sky there and infiltrating into that tree line there. I want to keep quite dark around that central area. So this is a deep red I'm using at the moment in there. doesn't need to be, um, just because they're dark, it doesn't mean that they need to be all browns and greens. I'm going to use a few other colours in there because I still want it to have some sort of colour in there. Now I'm going to move into my deep dark box and start putting in some of the, some of the dark sommeliers. And I, I've massed in some big blocks of uh, tree shapes there. So now I'm putting some more jabby motions with the short piece of the pastel. It's a very short broken piece I'm using. I'm just going to stop now and check my focus because last time I had a real trouble with focus. Uh, going in and out of here with quite dark choices for the, the foliage. Really covering the whole paper with the darks. I'm going to have a, a section of um, shadows coming across the road. 
And this is all just to help key it into the low key if I have um, a lot more shadows going in there. And I'm going to be making alongside the edge of the road for the track quite dark too, which it might be hard to hide. I'm losing all that brightness I had in that one because I want it to be all about the mysterious deep forest. Uh, putting in some blues as well. I just put in some very deep purple, so now I'm choosing a bit of brighter purple to put in because even though I want it to be dark. I'm sort of going for a muted look. I don't want it to be too boring, so I'm just adding in some more colours there. I'm going to add a bit of it into the, the shadowy areas over here where it's a little bit brighter, but as I said earlier, I'm not going to make it as bright as this painting over here. So it's got a very dark, deep feel to it, but I don't want it to be so dark that there's, an, there's uh, no interest. I want the focus to be in here in this little area, so I'm actually going to give her again some red pants, which will really stand out against all this dark, and I'll go for some lighter pants for this person. Get them some light lilac -y sort of coloured pants. And I might go into the a yellow top there. And this one's got a blue top, but it's a nice bright sort of blue. So it's just a suggestion of them. Um, it's quite shadowy in there, so I'm going to give the jacket a, a touch of shadow there and on the hood and for the yellow one as well I'm going to make it dark on that side and better give that person some hair of some sort I'll just put that out this and give them a quite look right but I can sculpt that around a bit using my dark that's a bit better Make it more like a, a head and then you put a collar on there okay and on the pants there I'm just going to put in a dark side of the pants too. So I've just put those uh, figures in to give me a focal point there and I've I've made them yellow and blue for complementary a bit of zing there and a touch of red which will, will play off the greens. I'm going to put in some of the lighter colours in here. As I said earlier they won't be as light as these greens but they are to suggest that there is some sunlight coming through this forest. And I'll be putting some over this side, but not as bright as that. Uh, I know it's, it's lighter than this, sorry, it's not as bright as this one, but so therefore the bright spots on these shouldn't be as bright as the bright spots on that one. So I'm just putting them in there, they're sort of a muted green, just to suggest that it's not all dark in there, there is some lighter spots. And they'll go throughout the, the forest there, just bringing in a little bit of light to the, the dark.
I was just putting in a few more shrubby bits around this area. Every time I broke this pastel, because I actually need it to be a little bit smaller to, to do the work here, that's better. Don't be afraid to break your pastels. It's hard when you get a new box, you think, oh, I need to get them perfect, but much better off being broken. So just popping in some of those lighter grasses there. So it has got a quite claustrophobic feel to it, as opposed to the light and airy feel of this one over here. And I'm just playing that up a bit more. I want to put in some more colours in that um, forest. And just warm it up slightly by using something slightly brighter. So this will just give us a little bit of a, a play. It's a, a dark um, sienna sort of colour. We'll give it a bit of a play off the greens and make it not um, be too static and cold, even though it's dark and moody. I, I do want to have a bit of a play of warm and cool colours in there too. But over in this side, I'm, I might just give it a bit of a peachy colour in there. Pinky peach colour, I don't know whether I'll let that stay or not. I'm trying to get a little bit of extra sunspots in there without making it too yellow. I don't mind the, the shots of pink. I might put one or two little shots in here as some... flowers along the edge. Um, this needs more work in here and just take a few even lighter greens than I had and pop a few of those in. I am now going to shift to another box out my unisons just I think they need a bit and then my mixed greens. Looking for some more different greens to put in. This is quite a nice very sort of bluey green which is quite cool and it's good for getting a bit more interest in the, the deep shadows in the trees here by putting in the very cool Green and just pushing those shadows areas back a little bit further. So quite a lot of it up here in the corners. Push them back. I might add just a little a few little touches down here of that as well. I've been putting in this bright yellow, but it's not as bright as the yellows I put in over there. Just a few touches of it, and I might even put a touch of it, just a couple of touches in there amongst the grasses. It's not quite as light as that one's slightly darker. So even the lighted areas are a little bit more muted than I saw them in the reference photo. I'm really taking that pink out. I've decided it didn't belong there. Might leave a little bit of it down here in the suggestions of the flowers. I'm using this muted lighter green for some grasses there. I'm going to actually turn this path back a bit here. 
because I don't like how it's going out of the thing. So I'll have the path going down and around like that. And just push the So you can change <laughs> as you're going. And I did want to change that. I didn't like the way it was looking. It was pushing everything into that corner. So I'm just taking it over there. And I'm, I'm much happier with that. So the path's just sort of splitting there, uh, which gives me a bit more of a chance there to, to play with those shadows going across the road. I'll make that area down there quite shadowed. So it is a very dark, uh, dark painting so far. I'm going to get a few little um, brighter bits on this section here, just to try and counterbalance that section over there. So just little foliage kind of marks, a little bit of sunshine hitting them in this section. I need to get in some of the leaves on the road. There's a lot of them over there and you can see that they're quite bright. Well, here they're going to be much more muted. You can see I'm putting them in with the very muted green, green and yellow there. I feel those people are a little bit bright there and perhaps should be a little bit more shadowed. So I'm going to darken off a little bit. Just have them blend in a little bit more there. And just have a hint of the hint of the brightness. And maybe make the brightness not quite so bright. So I'll put the blue back in, but it's going to be more muted blue. And I'll put the red back in, but make it a bit more muted. And that will tone it back slightly. And again, you can just sculpt around. If you're not quite happy with the shapes, just use your very dark background. To, to shape things a bit better. When I say better, that's a loose term, isn't it? Because I just shaped it worse. But I'll just go back into it now. There we go. So, still maybe a little bit bright there. Um, That's possibly a bit better, and just I like that bit of sky coming through there, so I'm going to actually leave it in, uh, and I might put a few more little sky holes throughout there and up in here just to show that it's not all just darkness in the forest. So 
bit of bit of the sky showing through. Uh, I want a little bit more lightness on this side. I went a little bit overboard with trying to make that all dark. And so I'll add in slight lighter areas there. This all needs a little bit more work. I'm going to. Goodness knows where I got that from. Put it in there. So I'm going to do a little bit of work on, on the road now just to get some, uh, a little bit of sunlight coming through there, even though it's a bit muted sunlight. I'll do a bit of sunlight. So. of the road there. The path, but what I need to do is now beef up those shadows on the road. So I'm just laying down some purples there, just in a scrub loose sort of way for the soft part of the shadows. Within the shadows, they're going to be much darker and deeper leaves, so I'll be taking some of the, the dark colours I used up in here. I'm just making little, little sort of leaf shapes in there, so just keep jabbing them around within the, the general soft purpleness of that. Maybe adding some little into that same colour in to the foliage at the edge there. I want these to sit flat sometimes tiny little curls on them they should get as the leaves are coming up so I'm just taking the very corner of my pastel just the the very corner of it and making random sort of marks with it so I've done a whole lot of the red coloured ones now I'm doing the, the brownie ones this is a quite a dark, deep one. Then I'll put in a few of the and I will put a couple of the darker ones coming out into the, the light because sometimes there are darker ones in the light. But I do need to put some lighter ones in as well. So just taking some of the lighter greens and putting some of those in the Yellow green ones as well. That does not want to 
snack on, so there we go. So I'm getting a sense of the light with those very bright ones there. Um, my path, I've made my path slope up like that, which is not good. And that's the way I've laid the shadow across there. I need to come down sort of like that and then make this go up like that, even if it's going in that direction, to suggest that there's a, a slope to the road. That's a little bit better. Um, I want to put in some more of those lighter coloured leaves. So. We, we do get a bit of a sense now of some light uh, coming across the path there. I'm going to put a couple of lighter little tips in a few spots there. Not too much in there because it's fairly much in the shadow of that, that spot and maybe a few little ones growing out of there and a couple of little there. Just warming it up a little bit on that side. I don't want it to be too dead even though it's quite dark. So it is intensely dark over there, but it's also quite colourful when you're getting close to it. And that's what that's what I'm the look I'm going for. Dark but colourful. Which when I first started painting, I just thought people were mad when they talked about things like that. How could you be dark and colourful? But there you are. It is richly, deeply dark and quite colourful. Uh, to balance that out even more, I would sign my name across this thing. I, I just need a few more darks in there, don't I, in amongst those. Just to make the shadows a bit more convincing on the road there. Just be careful how you put those in though, those jabby things so that they remain looking like leaves and not like other things. So you can get it carried away. So as I said to to balance that off a bit I would side my name down here. So help draw it together so. So it looks better with a really dark signature there. And you can see the difference, total difference in those paintings. Uh, one is, on the one hand, we have a sunny, bright, high key painting. On the other hand, we have a moody, low key painting. We see the same elements in there. There's a path, there's trees in sunlight and in shadow. There's shadows across the path. As I bring that closer, you can start to see all the interesting colours in the deep dark. So the closer in I come, the more you can see that. Much more interesting than it looked from further back. And then... 
the high key and you can see here the interesting colours in it as you get in closer. How lively and light field it looks. Hope you enjoyed this week's demo. I'll be back next week with another one. Thanks for dropping into the studio. Bye for now.